Our first reader tonight will be uh, Pamela Perkins Frederick. Pamela was born in Hampton, Virginia, and now lives in Bucks County. By the way, we have, uh, we have uh, uh, pairs of poets here tonight, two from Bucks County, two from Pittsburgh. It works out very nicely. We cover, we cover both ends of the state. Uh, Pamela now lives in Bucks County. In, in addition to writing poetry, she's a visual artist working with sculpture and photography and has taught at Bucks County Community College. Uh, Pamela has an MFA from Vermont College Creative Writing Program. Uh, her work has been published in the Beloit Poetry Journal, the Bucks County Writer, Cactus Fire, and Painted Moon Review. Her chapbook, A Leaf Gnawed to Lace, appeared in 1992. Did I get that right? And her book, No Sorrow That Light Won't Try to Wipe Away, was published in 2006. She was awarded a fellowship from the Virginia Center for the Creative Arts and won the Robert Fraser Poetry Competition Award from Bucks County Community College. Pamela Perkins Frederick was named Berks County Poet Laureate in 1984. The first one I'm going to read is dedicated to the center for the book, <laughs> and it's called The Desires of Books. The books want to be lined up carefully, their spine titles all facing left, their jackets even. They draw strength when they're in order of the alphabet, feel safer, less likely to be lost, feels cherished. They know they are, but this is extra, over and above that they are here, gathered, rescued from sales tables and borders, the library's 50 cents and one dollar bookshelf, the cardboard boxes furry from use at a yard sale. They've been in heaps, carelessly tipped and spilled. Now they know they are wanted, gloated over at times. But being alphabetical is better yet. Good if it's by title. Better yet, by author. Much better. After all, Lucille Clifton will be next to Clifton, Stafford next to Stafford, Bursk next to Bursk next to Bursk. All assured and a happy complicity. And the books know that lovers of Lux, of Rogers, of Sappho, of Hall and Gross and Keats, will be giving off the energy that comes from not just one Sajé find on the shelf, but the other Sajé is right next to it. Let's pick up on that. Makes them live longer, fit into their own shelf space, admired and, logically, made his home. And then you reach and take one down, and you hear the soft susurrus of a book's pleasure. The next second one I'm going to read you, this is not in the rope. I wrap up the butter and think about a knot tied loosely in a rope, slid along the rope, and then moved to another rope. I think of a candle flame, a goat-footed boy dancing on the wick that can leap to another wick, a paper spill, a sleeve. What's the knot? Not rope. Who's the boy? Not wick, not candle, not clothes on fire. The wave that curls its lip at the downstream base of a rock goes if the rock goes. Return the stone to the same position, and the wave forms again. What's the wave? The water? That flows on. Not the rock, nor air. Then what? The small bit of butter transferred to my thumb melts, spreads a little. I carefully suck away the taste, close the refrigerator door. A poem is curl, not goat-footed one. And you and I together set the wick aflame, lay the stone in the bed of the stream, indict the rope with not. A friend of my husband, before he was my husband, kept snakes. And she had some big ones. One was a rainbow boa that had just shed its skin. 
And its colors were, or her colors, were absolutely beautiful. And the woman asked me if I'd like to hold her. And I said, well, I figured I'd better, if I didn't do it now, I might never have another chance. And yeah, I'll hold her. And along my arm, the sun's warmth feels like the rainbow boa. The woman took her from her cage that day, said, don't frighten her and the sinuous warmth slipped over my shoulder, wrapped around my biceps, crossed my chest, and looped my neck. She locked her tail around my wrist, as if for balance or reassurance. Then her grave face turned and hung in air in front of me, regarding me with testing tongue. The rest of her 30 pounds kept sliding over me, though it felt as if she'd stayed in place like warm water moving in a straw. I tried gently to span her waist using both hands. My thumbs could not touch. When she finally left me, my arms lifted without my will, emptied, lightened. All week I felt a phantom weight, fantastic patterns sifting smoothly over my skin, like water's rippling repeated light. All week I was exotic, with the faintest cellar scent. I had held a boa, grown scales too faint to see, a mantle of dim flashing colors, sleek as water, just before it falls. This is never having seen it. Rivulets rampaging, frisky, full of themselves, carrying sticks, Rolling small stones, noisy, not listening to their elders, the willows, who stroke their branches in the race, saying, now, now, calm down. Nothing is so important you have to carry on like this. But the soothing has no effect. The rivulets are determined to grow up right now, now that they have the wherewithal. And they're going for broke, going to break records, going to show everybody who look or listen to their useful rumble, Maybe even card new channels. Not bother with joining up as they're supposed to do. Go in a group, brook to stream, stream to river. Going to find out once and for all, just as soon as they can, on their own, faster, faster. <coughs> finally going to know, they have their doubts, if there really is a sea. <laughs> this is probably my, my favorite poem. <laughs> It's called Signature. A tree grows small on the mountain if it grows where trees stop growing. It clings only at price, limbs straining and pushed by weather, bark fretted by abrasive winds, its grain becoming twisted, hard, dense, tight. Any fine woodworker would gloat over it. Her hands would stroke and spoon the curves. Massed against the twilight, the cattails hold the mysterious power of repeated verticals. They seethe in the marsh's dimming light, rattle when the wind gusts, sometimes break. That slant, the diagonal crossing the straight, that snapped reed, satisfies something, completes it. The wild grapevine climbs in the sun, roofs itself with green tiles. A leaf gnawed to lace by caterpillar holds our minds more than the translucent green glow of those whole. The fragility draws the eye. The veins make a mesh, a maze with no easily found door. The contorted limb, the curving tree, the eaten leaf, signatures of struggle. In a human, too, Contorted limb, curving back, birthmarked face. There must be somewhere. These are seen as beauty past the normal and loved for their adversarial stress lines, their rich and vital power. And the last one I will read to you is Mercy. May we all have it. 
Today, the sun has mercy. It wipes the panes of glass, glitters away every smudge, all the cocks, discolorations, all old rain. It lays graceful long hollows in the walk, stretches tree shadows, making them huge and stately over the ground. I can walk through the crochet of the branches, finely knotted shadows, have them move over me, cast me in their nets, as the sun thickens the grass, deepens the green, and tells me there is no sorrow that light will not try to wipe away. <laughs>